Hey there guys, today we're going to talk about schizophrenia and virtual reality. The reason I wanted to talk about this is because I recently got a chance to go to an Apple store and try out the Apple Vision and I was doing a lot of research about schizophrenia and VR. There's been several studies done and every day it seems like there's more conversation about how to use virtual reality to help people with severe mental illness specifically with schizophrenia. So today I'm gonna to tell you guys a little bit about my experience checking out the VR. And I'm also gonna tell you in what applications I think this would be really effective for people living with schizophrenia. So let's go ahead and get started. A couple months ago, I started getting a lot of comments about how virtual reality may be something of a tool for people with schizophrenia or psychosis in the future. What's been really interesting is in those couple of months I've already seen some ways that people are trying to use virtual reality to help people with these types of disorders. The National Institute for Health recently released a study about VR and schizophrenia and in the study they've said that it's already showing effectiveness in not only helping people with schizophrenia better identify symptoms but there's also potential for it to be used so that people without schizophrenia can really better understand what it's like living with it. And that's what I'm gonna talk about first because I had a speaking event over the weekend and I got a question from a gentleman who asked if I was upset to see that people were making simulations of schizophrenia. His concern that he heard from other advocates is that it might be stigmatizing because it's not the full experience, it's only showing you like some of the auditory and visual hallucinations or some of what it's like having the paranoia. And so the concern is that it won't be real enough to show people what it's actually like. But like with any illness, you're never gonna be able to fully experience it unless you have it. His comparison also was for blindness and deafness. There's different simulations they have now to try to help people better understand what it's like to not be able to see or not be able to hear. And in my opinion, and obviously it's gonna be different for other advocates, but in my opinion, it's always gonna be good to have other representation to help people better understand what I deal with day to day. So I love the idea of VR being used as a way for someone to fully immerse themselves in what it would be like to have auditory and visual hallucinations. I myself created an auditory hallucination simulation. And the reason I made this is because one of the most common questions I get asked is, what do the voices sound like? What do the hallucinations say? And though I'll never be able to show 100% what that's like, I wanted to be able to show a little bit of what they can sound like or how many voices I can hear. And so for me, that was a way to try to show people like, this is just a glimpse of what it's like. And so after I made the simulation, uh, you know, we started hearing a lot more about VR. And that's why when the Apple Vision came out, I was like, this is something that I really want, but it's also something that I need to see if it could be used in a way to help someone living with schizophrenia. So. I do plan on buying it after the experience I had, but I wanna to talk to you guys about what it was like trying this out. I've tried out other VR sets before, uh, and you know, you put them on and you don't really see what's going on around you. It's not very interactive with what's actually happening. And so the interesting thing about this was, when I had it on, first of all, super comfortable. I was really impressed with that. Uh, but when I had it on, you can still see everything around you. So like when I'm interacting with the items and I'm clicking like the things I wanna do around me, I'm still seeing the room I'm sitting in. The reason I think this might be helpful for someone with schizophrenia is um, you guys know that I love technology as a coping mechanism. I use my phone all of the time to identify if I'm having hallucinations. No, we don't have, there's nobody here. Do you need me to check you out though? Yeah, could okay. please? I also use my Ray-Ban smart glasses pretty frequently as well. And so I think VR might be that next piece of technology that might be able to help me more with my symptoms. The way that I'm thinking it would be useful might not be the way that other people plan on using it. I know that when I have visual hallucinations specifically, one of the things I do is use my phone or use some sort of technology to check to see if the person I'm talking to is really there or if they're a hallucination. And so what I think will happen, and I haven't been able to prove this because I don't have it yet, I plan on buying it soon, I think if I'm having active visual and auditory hallucinations, I may be able to put it on 
and I don't think that I'll be able to have those hallucinations while wearing the VR. Because if my coping mechanisms have taught me anything, it's that when I use a screen as a, almost like a way to see through to what's actually there, I've never had my hallucinations appear on the screen. So my thought process is it would be the same with a VR headset, and that's what I'm looking to try out. So that's why I wanted to go test this out, see what it felt like. I know that the price is uh, <laughs> not gonna be something that's gonna be widely accessible for everyone with schizophrenia or who might think this would be a good coping mechanism, but my hope is that if I show there is an effectiveness to this, that other people might be able to use it for the same application. And so I spent over an hour, uh, my wife was filming as I was trying out the different settings, it was very interactive, very interesting, a really cool piece of technology outside of what I'm looking at it for. The other thing I've seen in various studies about VR and schizophrenia is that there might also be potential to use it in a way that you can treat and help people identify that they are having symptoms. And so I think obviously all of the studies I've seen have been very clear that this is very new and there's not a lot of research around it yet and this is all hypothetical, but I do personally think that there's a lot of ways that this can be used not only to help people better identify symptoms, but also use it to help other people better understand the illness and help doctors and nurses better understand schizophrenia and those mental illnesses as well. I just think there's endless amounts of potential for how this could be used. I don't think we're seeing any of the applications effectively used yet. And so the first thing I want to do is get the Apple Vision and start using it in my everyday life and then try to start using it when I know that I'm having symptoms. So if I identify that I'm having symptoms, will putting this on allow me to stop seeing or hearing my auditory and visual hallucinations? Those are the questions I have and I'm gonna keep you guys updated, but I wanted to show you all the pictures and clips from this experience, and I'm gonna link some of the studies in the description down below. So check out some of these studies about virtual reality and schizophrenia, because um, I would love your guys' support as I try to look more into this and do more research myself about how this affects me as a person living with schizophrenia as they continue to do more research about how this affects patients, how it affects doctors who are training to help people with schizophrenia. I'm very excited. You, if you guys know me, you know that I'm a technology person. That's why I have the coping mechanisms I do. I've always relied on technology as a way to function day to day. Um, and I think we have a really cool opportunity to see that done on a wider scale if we start seeing success with virtual reality. But anyways, here's a few more clips and videos of me using the VR. There's gonna be a little button actually uh, at the top right. It looks like uh, a little box. Go ahead and tap that. Now look around. This is Iceland, but you're able to experience your panorama in, uh, this is called immersive view. And if you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comments. I wanted to thank you guys so much again for helping me hit 60,000 followers. As of today, we're pretty close to hitting 70,000, so it's been growing exponentially in the past couple of weeks, and I'm so grateful for that. And I'm gonna try to keep up on these weekly videos, so I do have a lot of traveling going on. I am trying to finish the book I'm writing right now about mental health and mental illness in the workplace. So bear with me over these next couple months as I try to get through all of this stuff. Uh, but I'm really excited uh, to keep making videos for you guys. Uh, let me know if there's anything you want to see down in the comments. Otherwise, I'll continue to do my schizophrenic story times and as much educational content as I can. I do have a collaboration coming up with Gabe Howard. He's a very well-known bipolar advocate. Um, so if you guys have any questions about bipolar disorder, also let me know down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.